Hi guys, it's Taneli here. So it's the second week of my new artwork every week for a year challenge. But today we are going to be doing something a little bit different because ever since I started posting videos of me painting on Microsoft Paint, I have been asked if I could make a tutorial about it. Well, uh, sorry that it has taken me this long to get to it, but today I will finally be showing and explaining my way of painting by painting this tree on a shore reference on Microsoft Paint. Now, if you want, you can paint along with me using this same reference, to which you can find a link down in the description. But I've also added a few other similar references where I believe the same techniques would apply if you want to try them but don't want to paint the exact same painting as I do. Uh, I also want to mention that these are the techniques that I use, which <laughs> doesn't mean that they are the only ways to paint, obviously. Uh, if you want to try different brushes, change the colors and just have fun with it, by all means, please do. Now, if you are going to paint something based on this tutorial, feel free to share your art on Instagram or Twitter using hashtag TTArtMSPaint, or you can join my Discord channel, the link is in the description below. I would love to see what you guys come up with, and last but not least, don't forget to hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe if you enjoy the video, it would help me a great deal. But alright now, that's out of the way, so let's get to painting. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to create the basic layout of the painting. I'm using 1280 times 850 pixel size canvas, but uh, you should adjust it to match your own screen size. Now, if you're having difficulties measuring where things should be on your canvas, I suggest creating a grid like this on top of your painting and the reference photo to help you measure distances more easily. After I selected a good base color for the water, I select the line tool and draw a straight line across the canvas to where I want the horizon line to be. Now, before we continue further, I just want to quickly say that when selecting colors, pick what you think feels good and uh, feel free to make the colors either stronger or even different than in the reference because uh, the goal here is definitely not to copy the reference like a printer but to create our own artwork based on it. Next I do the same thing for the grass field on the lower part of the picture. After I have mapped out where the horizon line for the water and the grass field should go, I select the paint bucket tool and fill the areas with color. If at any point you make a mistake, you can use Ctrl plus Z to undo your previous action. Ok, now that we have the basic layout for the painting down, it's time to get to the fun stuff and actually start painting. I select white color from the color palette and select the oil painting brush. Next, I use the size selection to make the brush a bit bigger. I personally love using the oil paint brush for creating the overall shapes and structures for my paintings. I start painting the clouds on the sky, doing short, slightly sweeping strokes. I don't care too much about having the exact same lines for the clouds as in the reference, more important is to capture the essence of them by making them look round and puffy with short and sweeping strokes. Now, let's pause for a moment. What I'm going to teach you to do next might seem a bit counterintuitive at first, but I guarantee it will do wonders for your long-term improvement as an artist. When we look at the reference photo, we realize that most of the sky and water is actually blocked from our view by the tree and the foliage in the foreground. Now your first instinct might be to just start painting the tree, but in a situation like this I really recommend using your imagination to expand the information we have on the reference to build our artwork in actual layers. The whole point of this exercise is to help us understand what we are actually painting better by using our observational skills and imagination to extend the information we have in our two-dimensional reference to think the world how it really is in three dimensions. Now, if that sounds complicated, let me break it down with an example. Now, we know that the sky and the water continue behind the tree in the foreground. We have enough information around the tree and in the sky holes between the branches that we can imagine what the picture would look like if the tree and the foliage was not there blocking our view. It would look something like this. 
By doing this exercise we have simplified the information we have to deal with and made our own task of transferring it on a canvas much easier. So let's continue painting the picture imagining that there was no tree or foliage blocking our view. From now on I will speed up the video in parts where I will be doing a repetitive tasks that I have previously explained and slow it down when there is something new to explain. In these situations feel free to pause the video and continue when you have caught up with me. Now that I have the basic shape for the brightest part of the clouds down on the canvas I select a darker color with slightly purple hue to paint the shadows on the clouds. I continue painting the shadows with same sweeping strokes to keep the clouds looking round and puffy. I want to give my clouds a little bit more structure by adding even darker, slightly more bluish shadows. I place the darkest shadows approximately where I see them on the reference. I see that between the clouds and the water there is a more grayish tone, so I add some gray under the clouds. I continue building and adjusting the shape and structure of my clouds by including a tone between the gray and the blue. At this stage the most important thing is to just get the basic shape, structure and color down. We will come back to work on the details of the clouds later. Now that we have the basic shape down for the puffy clouds on the front, it's time to start doing the same thing for the less distinct, more feathery clouds on the background. I start by selecting a color that is slightly brighter than the sky and increase the brush size. Then I start making longer horizontal strokes above the puffy clouds to match the feathery structure and horizontal shape of the clouds. I try not to paint on top of the clouds too much, but a little bit of mixing and matching is okay. I continue adding structure and hues to the clouds by including just a little bit more color. I try to imitate the shapes and patterns I see on the reference when placing down my clouds. I continue adding more shades by slightly altering the color and continue following the same directions with my brush strokes. I'll continue doing this until I'm satisfied with the base colors and structures for the rest of the sky. I use the reference photo as a guidance but allow myself the freedom to include more contrast and saturation with darker, lighter and more colorful tones. I was not fully satisfied with the structure of the clouds on the foreground, so I went back to give them a little bit more shape with a light shadow on a smaller brush. Once I was happy with the basic shapes for the sky, it was time to do the same for the water. I continue selecting different blues, some with more green and some with more purple hues, based on what I see on the reference. To match the texture of the water, I try to do as horizontal strokes as I can.
Now if you're having a hard time with the horizontal strokes, using undo action with Ctrl plus Z helps. Or you can just switch to using the line tool instead. To paint the rest of the water is just doing the same thing as we did when painting the sky, just using horizontal strokes. While the land on the opposite shore is barely visible on the reference, I wanted to emphasize it a bit, and painted the opposite shore a bit bigger than in the reference. Now that we have the basic shapes and colors down for the sky and the water, it's time to do the same for the land on the front. I start by mapping out the shadow of the tree right near the water. I notice that in the reference there is a small ditch near the water, so I shape it in with the color of the water and then continue with the shadow. Since there is a lighter part where the light hits the grass, I paint the middle area of the land with a brighter green. And finally I paint the shadow that's right on the foreground using the same color I used for the shadow of the tree. Now that I have the base colors down for the land I start giving it just a bit more structure by including darker shadows and blend transitions between light and shadow with mid tones by selecting colors that are in between the two tones. At this point I feel like the basic shapes for the painting are good enough and it's time to start working on the details. Painting the details is the most time consuming part of any painting so feel free to do as much or as little work on them as you want. The amount of detail in a painting is an artistic choice. I paint the details using a natural pencil brush. However you can also continue using the oil painting brush if you like the look and texture of it better. At this stage of painting I very rarely use the edit colors tool to include new colors. Instead I use the colors I've already put down on the canvas by using the color picker tool and pick them directly from the canvas. Now let's zoom in a little. I start working on the details of the sky by blending in colors with the natural pencil brush, maintaining the direction of the strokes that matches the reference and the shape of the feathery clouds. I continue using the color picker tool to select colors and blend them in to make the sky look smoother. I continue doing this until I have desired smoothness and feathery structure for the whole sky.
Like I said, you can work on the details as much or as little as you feel like. I would have normally continued working on the details a little bit longer, but I wanted to keep this tutorial at reasonable length. So I decided that I will do less layer of details at the end of the tutorial. So we can move on to detailing the clouds on the front. Let's zoom in again. The technique I use here is similar, but I use shorter sweeping and round strokes to match the shape and structure of the clouds. I continue picking the colors with the color picker and create shapes the way I see them in the reference photo. I will continue using the exact same technique for the water and the grass. I use the colors that I already have on the canvas and do the brush strokes in the same direction that matches the reference. Once we are done with the details of the background, we can finally get to painting the tree and the foliage in the foreground that we removed from the reference at the beginning of the painting process. I wanted to include some more detail in the foreground to emphasize that it's closer to us than the tree and the background, so I started giving it grass-like structure with short downwards brush strokes. I started mixing some lighter and darker patches of grass to make the ground seem a little less even and much more natural. Okay, now that we are starting to have a reasonable amount of detail on the background and foreground of this painting, it's time to bring the tree and the foliage back and start painting the main features of this piece. Now before we start painting the tree, I want to pause for a moment and explain why I personally want to paint the tree like I do. The thing is that generally you would want to start by mapping out the general shapes and structures with a big brush and slowly move to a smaller brush and work on the details last. If you feel more comfortable working with this approach, by all means do, there is definitely nothing wrong with it. However, I start painting the tree by using a small natural pencil brush like I was working on the details right away. The reason why I do this is in the texture and structure of the tree, which are mostly leaves. Now considering that I took all this time to add all this information to the background, I don't want to hide it all by painting on top of it with a big brush. By using a smaller transparent brush I maintain some of the information in the background while painting a layer on top of it. This creates an illusion of three dimensions in a two-dimensional painting like I explained in the beginning. I start painting the tree from the darkest shadows by slowly mapping out the general shape of it. Thank you. 
Once I have mapped out the general shape for the tree, it's time to map out the trunk and the branches. Again, I'm not too concerned whether my branches look exactly the same as in the reference. For me, it's more important that they capture the essence of looking like branches. The good thing about painting trees is that they come in almost every shape and size, so just draw freely what you see in the reference and use your imagination to fill in the blanks where the branches are harder to see due to the leaves in front of them. Now as you can see here, I leave some of my branches here not connecting to the trunk, because I had already decided that the part would be covered with leaves anyway. If this seems difficult for you to think ahead, feel free to connect all of your branches to the trunk at this stage. Here I will start adding some lighter highlights on the right and top side of the tree and the branches. Even though the branches are almost fully black in the reference, I wanted to emphasize the direction of light with some highlights. We can see that based on the shadow of the tree and how the light and shadow create shapes, that the light source in the picture is in the top right. I continue adding some even lighter highlights to give the tree just a bit more shape and structure. Once I'm happy with the trunk and the branches, I continue working on the leaves, starting from the darkest shadows and slowly moving towards the lighter areas. Now that I have most of the darkest shadows mapped out, I select a slightly lighter color and start working step by step towards the lightest areas of the tree, by following what I see on the reference. I start working from dark greens and slowly add more yellow hue as I move towards the lighter areas, to give the tree that look like it's basking in the sun. And again I select a lighter and a more yellow color to highlight areas where the light hits the tree. While I continue to use the reference photo as a guidance, I like to think in more general terms when I'm painting. What is the direction of the light? which part should be lighter and which should be darker. When I start painting the tree, I almost think what it would look like if the branches closest to us would not be there blocking our view. Painting the rest of the tree will be done by using the exact same techniques, moving from darker shadows slowly towards the lightest areas as shown here. I will now speed up the video until the tree is fully painted. Now as I started to feel like that the general shape of the tree was starting to look good, I wanted to focus a bit more on the colors. I noticed that my tree is maybe just slightly too green and yellow compared to the light that we have in the reference. So I started including some brown in the leaves to give it just a tiny bit more of that late evening or early morning look. 
At this point the tree is basically finished, but I decided to continue working on it just a bit longer to define the shapes a bit more and add in just a little bit more detail. And now, like I said earlier, I didn't want this tutorial to last forever, so I decided to stop working on the details here and do the finishing touches at the end of the tutorial. All we have left now is painting the foliage in the left side and then adding the yellow flower field on the foreground. Painting the foliage was fairly simple, just using downward strokes in the same direction as I saw them in the reference, using the same natural pencil brush. The main thing was to get the values right as the bush on the right side remains in the shadow of the tree, while the one on the left side is basking in the light. So I make sure to paint the bush on the right much darker than the one next to it. Once I'm done painting the foliage, you can see me doing just a tiny bit of cleaning up with what I had already painted, before I move on to the last stage of painting the flowers on the foreground. To paint the flowers I select a bright yellow color and basically just start tapping down plots of paint on top of the grass. I continue doing this by including some darker and lighter areas until I'm happy with the way it looks. I start mixing in some darker and lighter grass areas to give the foreground a tiny bit more shape and texture. Now basically at this point we could call it a day and say that the painting is finished. I however wanted to continue working on the details and fine tuning it just a bit, but uh, it's basically just doing the same things that I've already explained. So from now on I will just speed up the video until the painting is finished and you can continue to work on your piece for as long or as little as you feel like. Uh, I just want to thank you for watching this tutorial and if you did paint something based on it, uh, make sure to share it on Instagram or Twitter with the hashtag TTArtMSPaint or feel free to join my Discord channel to share your art there. The link to the Discord channel is down in the description. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it useful and if you did, please hit a like, subscribe and drop a comment, that would help me a lot. Uh, that being said, I just want to say thank you and I hope to see you all again next week.